You're back on stand with Kelly and Nikki Chewbacca. Just following up on a fantastic interview with Naomi Wolf about her new book, Facing the Beast. So exciting to get to talk with her in person after so many years of just seeing her ideas in academia. But I think the part of the conversation and the part of the book that's so interesting to me is her journey through courage. So she actually details in her book about how she didn't start out so courageously. And she sort of references that in the interview. She was just doing what she was supposed to do. She's just being a journalist. But that she got a lot of courage from watching other people be courageous. And so she took um, cues, if you will, or gathered courage to do some really brave things from watching people around her who were doing really courageous things. And she mentioned some of them, you know, people who didn't share her political views, but were doing the right thing. And I think she also referenced it, you know, with respect to the history of her family, which she's written about a lot. And um, having that courage, I think, coming from somewhere deep within, you know, believing something higher than yourself, that you're part of a story larger than yourself. And the goal isn't to maximize comfort. Um, The goal is to stick to those core values. And what do you really believe and what will you stand for? So there's this fascinating part in the book where she talks about, you know, she's in New York and she lives in New York and New York had some of the most strict mandates and how she defied those mandates. And because she's such a public figure, it was really public. And there were a couple times that she imminently faced arrest and how terrified she was. But then she never was arrested. And so she kind of calls it out and she says, it's interesting when you actually stand up and do what's right and you don't comply with unjust laws, laws that violate civil liberties and constitutional rights. Um, There's no teeth in the bite. It's this fascinating, and she kind of goes through historical examples of this as well, and and talks about how if people were to do that in mass, it would sort of expose that this is actually just a, a power play, a control play, and not an effort to actually try and achieve the stated objectives, such as, for example, public health. Because if it was, then you would act quickly. Um, instead, it's just an effort to control, and she sort of compares that to times in history, like in 1933, when they did similar things to just try and mind control the population. I thought that was a fascinating journey that she took, um, pointing to these other people who had courage, the few, the proud, Mm -hmm. (laughs) the courageous. And then what happens when you actually step up to that line of courage that, yeah, they'll deplatform you, but they won't actually do uh, much else as far as like from the government perspective. Well, I mean, she... She really minimized. She's very humble, and she really mm-hmm. minimized the 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 courage that she sh- she showed. Uh, she showed a lot of courage, and she and others sacrificed a lot. Have sacrificed a lot. That's true. Um, there are a lot of journalists out there who didn't speak up and who haven't spoken out and who have continued to um, advance this false narrative uh, that. You know that whole that that whole crisis was well thought out in terms of how we responded to it, and that no civil liberties were unjustly you know, impinged on. Sure. And, um, and so it takes a lot of courage to stand up against a current and say, "No, mm-hmm. this isn't right." And I think you know, as I think back to when I started reading uh, her writings back in back in college, she's always been consistent in 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 her principles and that's one of the things that i admire about her and it's because of that consistency that she was able to look at this whole crisis and and say wait a second Mm -hmm. um even though i've always associated myself with this group of people from an ideological standpoint they're not following the principles that i thought we shared and how quickly they've flipped not just on those principles but on me and to have the intellectual integrity mm-hmm. and the courage to to follow those principles even when they isolate you from the people who you would thought were your right. community is tremendously i think courageous it's one of the things that she touched on she didn't go go deeply into it but i i, I think you know, when she talked about how quickly things flipped, mm-hmm. I was just thinking to myself how powerful a force fear can be. 
mm. and how this is an important lesson to all of us as Americans that we were so quick to uh, be willing to give up our freedoms for perceived security when we found out later and after the fact that, you know what, uh, we could have maintained our freedoms and had that security. Good point. Um, and so I, I hope we learn a lesson from all of that. There's another point that she made in the book that I'd love for, to hear some more from you on too is she talks about the spiritual uh, mm -hmm. aspect to all of this, which I found very interesting. Um, but she, you know, she, and she kind of referenced it in the interview, I think at the beginning too, sort of the metaphysical aspect of, of what's happening when you asked her that first question. So it's interesting to hear voices like hers and Tucker Carlson and others recognizing that there's something more that was going on here that's go and that is going on here than just what we're seeing with the naked eye. They're perceiving something metaphysical, something n behind all of this that isn't just your regular, ordinary, everyday political stuff. <laughs> right. This wasn't just a political move. Um, there was something spiritual behind this, which, of course, is something you and I acknowledge and believe. We don't just operate in the natural, just like we have um, physical bodies, we have minds, we have bodies, we also have spirits, and that there's something spiritual behind uh, what's happening in our culture and country today. And she doesn't just time-bound her book back in 2020 and 2021. It goes all the way up to 2023, which is fascinating. Mm -hmm. But yes, there's this interesting chapter where she writes about um, the spiritual battle that is happening in our country today. And she acknowledges that she doesn't and hasn't talked about God much at all in her writings, which you and I know, but that it's time to start talking about the element of the spiritual side of things in what's happening in our country and happening across the world right now. And it's a fascinating chapter. So again, absolutely recommend the book. It's a fantastic book. And I don't I don't say that about many things. Mm -hmm. uh, I will be adding it to my collection. Yeah. And, you know, I think it's the war for the nation's soul. Yeah. Right? For for each of our souls, when you, when you think about, am I willing to see the liberties of my fellow human beings crush their personal bodily autonomy, dis, you know, the rights to their personal body autonomy discarded, their voices silenced? Um, if we are willing to sit back and say, that's okay, they deserved it because we disagree with them, or, you know what, that's not okay, but I don't want to say anything about it because I don't want that to happen to me. Look, I mean, we all have that that fear, right? We got to acknowledge it. There's nobody who doesn't have at least some level of trepidation about what the mm. consequences could be of standing for what you believe. Um. But if we don't, mm -hmm. what happens to us like in ter from a soul perspective? Mm -hmm. And what happens to the soul of a nation if we collectively turn our backs on um, the very values and the things that, that we hold dear and that so many of Americans had given their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honor to protect? Right. right? So I, I'm encouraged to see her continue to speak out, others continue to speak out, because I think the tide is turning. Right. I think it's turning. I think Americans are are realizing, whoa, things went too far. Now the question is going to be, how, how strongly, how steadfastly do we stand? Mm -hmm. Will we stand together and link arms and say, no more, this is not going to happen again, we need to get back to the regular order of what true freedom and liberty is about and what America is about. Enough with this deplatforming, enough with this canceling, enough with I'm deciding from my own subjective perspective what is a false narrative, you know, what is, you know, what is what I call propaganda, you know. Um, we are a country that believes in the freedom of conscience, the freedom of speech, the freedom of thought, and you don't have a right to silence somebody of somebody else's beliefs mm -hmm. or their voice. Yeah, I think it's a really great point that 
we have an option on where we go from here. And I appreciate that Naomi Wolf is standing for truth and for freedom. And to your question about the spiritual battle, that we have an opportunity for spiritual redemption. And she's, you know, trailblazing that path along with others. There's others like her um, where there's an opportunity for unity. I believe it was her interview with Tucker Carlson that I was watching with our oldest. And you know, she turned to me and said, I think that she needs to recognize that she's become a Republican. And I turned to her and I said, or we've become Democrats. And the point being that uh, in this intellectually honest journey, the the lines are becoming blurred when you can find places of unity. Like you said, um, when Naomi Wolf can recognize, not only have I been lied to, but I've helped perpetuate those lies and and created some deep divides in America that didn't actually need to be there. But she's not the only one who needs to look in the mirror. That all, all of do. us need to look in the mirror and do. say, wait, where have I believed some of these things that have been divided? And that's actually, unity is actually a spiritual thing. Mm -hmm. And there's an opportunity here as we have our eyes open, because she didn't just mention, you know, one public health crisis. She mentioned a couple areas where this has happened, where we can actually say, you know, she started her interview, before your audience hates me, there's no reason to hate. That's why we've had her on the show. Um, there's opportunity to look within and say, okay, wait, where have I had misconceptions? And we can build bridges and have unity because we actually agree on a lot of things around the principles of freedom, truth, and government led by we the people, which is what we're standing for. And she, the book is really a mirror for us in, in that regard. Yeah. That we, like, like you said, we've all been part of that divide, but now, like her, we can all be part of that bringing together. A time right? of unity. Yep. Yeah. So get the book, folks. It's... It's amazing, and you can get it anywhere good books are sold. <laughs> Check it out. Buy it for a family or member or friend. Yeah, Facing the Beast by Naomi Wolf. You're on stand with Kelly Nikki Chewbacca. We'll be right back after the break. Make sure to hit subscribe. We'll see you in a minute.